हरी बोल महाराज प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माय हम्बल अच्छा लोटस फीट महाराज ऑल क्लोरिस्टर शीला प्रभुपाद एंड गुरु महाराज थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग महाराज होप यू हैड अ वंडरफुल नरसिम्हा चतुर्दशी इट्स वंडरफुल टू सी यू महाराज if you could kindly enlighten us and today we are going to read from canto 7 chapter 7 verse 47 onwards whenever you have some time hari bol thank you nina hari krishna all glories to the assembled devotees let's see Yes, okay, I got it. Okay, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Karmaya Karmanya Rabate Dehi. Dehi Natmanu Vartinam Karma Bistanu Te. Translation, the living entity who has received his present body because of his past food of activity may end the results of his actions in this life. But this, that, that, but this does not mean that he is liberated from bondage to material bodies. Living entity receives one type of body and performing actions, actions with that body, he creates another. Thus, he trans, transmigrates from one body to another through repeated birth and death because of his gross ignorance. A living entity's evolution through different types of body conducted automatically by the laws of nature and bodies other than those of human beings. <laughs> In other words, the laws of nature, prakriti, kriyamanani, the living entity evolves from lower grades of life to the human form. Because of his developed consciousness, however, the human being must understand the constitutional position of the living entity and understand why he must accept a material body. This chance is given to him by nature, but if he nonetheless acts like an animal, One is the benefit of his human life. In this life, one must select the goal of life and act accordingly. Having received instructions from the spiritual master and the Shastras, one must be sufficiently intelligent. In the human form of life, one should not remain foolish and ignorant. He must inquire about his constitutional position. <laughs> This is called... Atato Brahma Jigyasa. The human psychology gives rise to many questions, which various philosophers have considered and answered with various types of philosophy based on mental concoction. <laughs> This is not the way of liberation. The Vedic instructions say, Tadvigyartam sa gurum eva abhigats jet. To solve the problems of life, one must accept a spiritual master. Tasman Guru Prapadyeta Jigyasu Shre Uttamam. If one is actually serious in inquiring about the solution to material existence, one must approach the bona fide Guru. Tad Vidi Pradipate Nam Paripasyena Sevaya Upadekshyanti Te Gyanam Gyaninas Tat Pradarshanaham. Try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master, inquiring from him submissively, and render service unto him. The self-realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because he has seen the truth. 
One must approach a bona fide spiritual master by surrendering himself, paripatena, and rendering service. Intelligent person must inquire from the spiritual master about the goal of life. The bona fide spiritual master can answer all such questions because he has seen this he has seen the real truth. Even in ordinary activities, we consider loss and gain, and then we act. Similarly, an intelligent person must consider the entire process of material existence and act intelligently, following the directions of the bona fide spiritual master. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurvena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Swam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pachari Ne Nirvase Sasunya Vari Pasyatya De Satari Ne Vanchakopa Tarubhishya Vipa Sindhu Pe Vacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasa Vibhara Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So one cannot stop receiving bodies as long as one is in the material world. The material world means to have a particular type of of uh, body by which one can function in the material world. The spiritual body belongs in the spiritual world. The material body works only in the material world. It's not qualified to get to the spiritual world. The material body is simply a combination of material elements formulated in such ways that it formulates different types of bodies, 8,400,000 species of life. None of these different forms of life are actually life. They're casings for the real life, which is the soul. The soul sits inside each one of these different forms of life and acts according to the body that it has. And therefore, it creates activities and the results of the activities are, are calculated in such a way as to formulate a certain type of consciousness. Based on that quality of consciousness, one is actually developing their next body. And so at the time of death, whatever consciousness they have developed by their activities and desires in that life, they get a concomitant body in a particular mother with a particular type of body. It could be any one of the 8,400,000. Some people say, well, once you reach human life, you don't go back. That is not correct, according to Shastra. Shastra says, karma daiva ne traina. By your karma, you get a particular type of body. So if you act like a human, then you get a human body. There are qualities and characteristics which define human life. If one acts like an animal, simply to fulfill the uh, when we say the propensities of the needs of the human, uh, the body, such as eating, sleeping, sex life, and defense, and then they get an animal body according to, according, all done by the laws of material nature, under the control of higher powers. But we are not free, but we are free to decide how we want to act and where we want to go. So here it says one who's actually intelligent doesn't look for another place in this material world. They want to get out of the material world because the material world is a place of confinement for the soul. And it's surrounded by various types of miseries, birth, death, disease, old age, miseries of the body and mind, miseries of other living beings, miseries of higher powers. All of these are prominent and consistent in the material energy. So one who's actually intelligent will not 
accept another body to go through the same suffering. But the living entities are so foolish, they think that they can adjust material energy to make it work in such a way as to improve their happiness in this material world. But the material energy is Krishna's energy, maya dakshena prakriti suyate sachar In that verse from the ninth chapter, verse number 10 of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains <clears throat> that uh, this material energy is my energy and it works under my direction. So no one can control the material energy. You can manipulate it to a certain degree to somehow or other feel that you have created a better situation. But as it says in the, in the Bhagavatam, in the fifth canto, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, first canto, fifth chapter, verse number 18, that one's destiny of happiness and distress is already allotted to one in the material world as soon as they take birth in a particular species particularly human species. So amount of happiness and the distress that one is destined to get will come automatically. One doesn't have to try for it or try to avoid it. It'll come. That's also there. It says whatever is in your bank account is what's in the bank account. You can't say there's more or, or even less. You get what you put into it. So in our previous activities, we're putting into our, to our, our karmic account. And in that karmic account, there is so much happiness and distress that will come automatically. So that cannot be changed unless one desires to get out of the karmic cycle by taking to the process of pure devotional service. And there is where the spiritual master and the Shastras become one's guide and friend in bringing one to above the three modes of material nature. For one is still within the material body, but is no longer affected, at least to a large degree, by the actions and reactions of material energy. One, on, one who is trying to get out doesn't try to stay in by trying to fulfill the material desires. It's just like <clears throat> if you're digging, if you're uh, trying to make a fire and every once in a while you throw some water on the fire, the fire is going to go down. Or sometimes you may even put it out. So trying to cultivate material happiness along with spiritual progress is contrary. You can't do it because both of these are in the opposite direction. Therefore, uh, devotees should always be aware that material life is simply uh, a, a constant struggle in order to achieve something that you can't even keep or even fully enjoy at the time of achievement. It just comes and goes, and it's just fraught with so many problems. It's designed in that way by the, by the Lord in order to frustrate the living being's attempt to live in this world eternally. If we could be happy here, then no one would be inspired to go back to their spiritual abode, to be with the Supreme Lord in loving devotional service, which is, of course, the constitutional nature of all spiritual beings, living beings. Then there would be no impetus, impetus for that attainment. Therefore, the, wor the world is full of misery. And it's another kind of punishment. It's a punishment that when you leave the spiritual world, you, have, you accept something less. And in that something less, there is simply a struggle for existence. Even if one is thinking, well, I'm happy. Things are going my way. Well, how long will that have last? <laughs> Things change in this world. And then there's always suffering. No one expected this big uh, COVID epidemic to come, but it came, killed millions of people, millions, and is still killing people even to this day. Uh, yeah, so no one planned on that, at least 
no decent human being planned on it, but it's came. And then, you know, you want to do something, you make your plans for some activity and the, um, the external energy puts blockages in your attempt to succeed. Usually by, again, by higher powers given by the, dem the demigods. So there is just a whole long list of anomalies that come by way of material life. So the first prerequisite for actually being in serious, enthusiastic, is to un in spiritual life, is to understand there's no happiness in this material world. Why should I waste my try time? Why don't I just accept what Krishna says? Kudukali amasastratam. Anityam asubam. When Krishna says something, that's nice. But when he repeats it in a different way, the same point, he wants to emphasize it. And when he says it three times, then there is no question. So this material world has been said so over and over again in the Shastras is simply a place of suffering. <laughs> and th those who don't believe it, stick around. <laughs> I don't re recommend you stick around, but you'll see. Material life is simply a struggle. Those who somehow have good karma, how long does that last? And then it runs out. And even good karma is not happiness. It's just a, re a relief from suffering. That's all it is. Real happiness is is uh, Brahma, Brahma Jigyasa or Brahma Tejas. Or, or Brahma Sokyam, Brahma Sokyam, that happiness that comes with performing austerities in order to get to the spiritual platform and then engaging in devotional service. So in the austerities, this chant 16 rounds of, on beads of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, follow the four restrictions, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no meeting and no gambling, and use your time to engage in some practical activities for the pl pleasure of the spiritual master and the Vaishnavas and, of course, the Lord himself. And then worship the Lord in your home. Take only Krishna prasadam, food offered to the Lord, which is sanctified food. Not, it's only not only purifies the consciousness, but it's also good for the body. So this is... Uh, the process. And so here, um, go down to the end of the purport. I think there's some really interesting statements on the end there. Yeah. Yeah, and then when, when one comes in contact with the guru, then praripatena, praripatena means to, in a humble way, prasyena means questions and sevaya means service so these three words pranipatena means to approach the spiritual master humbly the actual word means pranipatena means to fall flat like a dandava like a stick in front of the spiritual master pariprasyena means relevant inquiry into the activities of spiritual life into the goal of spiritual life and sevaya is to rend to do perform these these three things are the are the requirements for making progress in devotional service this says here the spiritual master can answer all of your questions and guide you along the path because he is also on the path and he's also seen the truth through his realization of the practice of Krishna consciousness. So there's the formula. As the verse really sums up everything, the, uh, the miseries of material nature and the useless affairs of the conditioned souls as mayadavase, kacho base, kacho ho gugu duvai, life after life in different species of life, traversing throughout the different universes and experiencing the same thing. 
eating, sleeping, mating, and defendants, birth, death, disease, and old age. So, therefore, one who is actually intelligent and knows their own best interests will no longer take part in the activities of material life, but will engage only in devotional service, knowing this is the path of progress, this is the path of eternal happiness, full knowledge, and ultimately developing their love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is actually the nature of the soul's existence. And the soul has love for Krishna, but the body and mind have usurped the position of the soul and have become the focus of the living entity's activity. And therefore, the living entity cannot taste that the real nature which is to, to engage in loving service to the Supreme Lord. Okay, we'll stop there. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you again for your wonderful association. And thank you for constantly repeating, yes, it's Dukhalyam Ashashwatam, and somehow... Our mind is still not accepting it. It still keeps looking for happiness and pleasure and way out, and we still never learn, but we'll keep practicing, hopefully in the association of the devotees. Um, do you have some time to take some questions, Maharaj? I'm really short on time today, especially because uh, so many things are happening at once, but we can take some questions. One or two. 10 or, 10 or 15 minutes worth of questions. Okay. Devotees, if you have some questions, you can unmute yourself or just raise your hand. Let me get to the gallery here. It's only four people. This is not the gallery. It's mm -hmm. a, this is gallery here, but it's not. I just have some. Okay. I have um, Shiv Kumar Prabhuji. Would you like to go ahead and ask your question, Prabhu? Thank you. Thank you. Hey Krishna Maharaj, the Lord Thomas Maharaj. Maharaj, one question, uh, Maharaj. <clears throat> uh, Where are you? When... I can't see you. Uh, can you? I can't seem to get the the gallery where I can see all the devotees. All I can see is six people. Hmm. And what is the? So on the top and top right hand side, if you should see the button view. Yeah. Maharaj, they are on. They are not on camera. Yeah, my uh, yeah, but it's um, no uh, others. Uh, they 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 muted. It's on gallery, but I'm only getting six people. Yeah, devotees, would you like to turn on your yeah. videos, please? Yeah, six videos. Well, yeah, okay. There you go. Now yeah. I'm. Oh, well, actually, now I'm getting only. Now I'm getting more yeah. devotees, devotees. But usually, I can see everyone, at least. Okay, so where's our questionnaire? Is he somewhere there? I don't think so. Oh, she Maharaj. Was... Maharaj, one question, uh, Maharaj. Um, when when there is some distress, uh, it seems the mind is immediately looking for some sense uh, engagement. And it seems to get some sense of assurance by just getting into an immediate uh, uh, sense pleasure. Uh, especially when it is in distress. I just wanted to understand, Maharaj, why is that so? And Well, when we get into some distress, then the mind wants to immediately get out of the distress, which is normal. But then the question is, what is your means for getting out of your distress? If you go into something similar of the same nature that caused the distress, you may get some temporary relief, but because you're in the same category, you'll get distress again. So if you want to get out of distress, you have to go to a higher level. Something that's permanent, and that is some spiritual activities. And we always say, chant Hare Krishna. And we, so rather mm -hmm. than looking, all right, I'm in distress. Let me look, see what's in the refrigerator. Maybe that'll help me get rid of my distress. <laughs> but it's not going to, it, it just, 
stress for a few mo moments and then the stress will return. Mm -hmm. Solutions are on the, on the not on the same level as the problem. Mm -hmm. That means we mm -hmm. have to go to the higher level. We have to go to that which is actually frees one from distress. Distress mm -hmm. is part, anxiety, suffering, all part of the material uh, tabernacle. Mm. And as we act within that, we get that. Now, there is spiritual distress, but it's not distress. It's just a type of anxiety that comes when one wants to serve more than they're actually doing, and they're feeling a little anxiety that then their, their service is not as good as it could be. That's transcendental anxiety. Or, that's fine. But, and we want that. That's also very difficult to achieve, and it's also a sign of advancement. But material distress is just the nature of the material world, depending on the level of the activity you're performing. If you perform activities in the mode of ignorance, it's all distressful. If you perform activities in the mode of passion, it's still distressful, but it's mitigated in comparison to the word modes of ignorance. There's still some distress. In the mode of goodness, there's hardly any distress there. And one is feel, uh, feeling somewhat happy in that situation. But the modes are always in competition for supremacy, as is explained in the first canto. I'm sorry, sec second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. And so one cannot stay on that level. It's temporary. And therefore, one will come again to the lower modes and there'll be always uh, up and up and down according to one's uh, activities in the material world. So we have to perform spiritual activities if we want to get out of the, get out of it permanently. And that is to chant the holy names of the Lord, which is the most direct and easiest and recommended way to overcome all stress in, in this material world. It's direct. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Wonderful question. Great answer. Any yeah. other questions from devotees? Kanchana Abja has a question. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. My basins is who grace the power part. Um, well, I was just following up from that question, I just it it sounds so right to chant when one is distressed, but I often because I don't have taste, it's the last thing I want to do when I'm distressed. It's like picking, if, especially if I'm overcome by frustration or anger, picking up beads and chanting. It just seems. Yeah, I, I, this doesn't seem like what I want to do at that time. It just seems like I, I can't chant. Or I don't know if that's something I'm telling myself, but when caught up in so much emotion, um, yeah, chant, chanting doesn't seem like a... You can't chant, but, but, you, but you know you should. Yeah, yeah. You know it's right. So you know, the question is, how to get to where from the point of of knowing to actually doing yeah when caught up in emotion and distress yeah well maybe if you even if you initially don't go for the holy name or some spiritual shelter if you stay within the distress you'll you'll start to realize hey <laughs> It's not working. All of my plans for getting it, you know. It's <laughs> so sometimes for for the for those fixed, when they get into a more chanting is the first option. For those who are less fixed, it becomes an option, and then those who are hardly fixed at all, it becomes the last resort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a story in. Uh, this is a historical event that happened in Chicago back in the, I guess, 1950s, I think. 
there was a a coal wave that hit Chicago, and it was continuous. It was just like going plunging below the zero mark Fahrenheit for weeks. And it was so bad that people had to leave their homes and go into gymnasiums where they can get heat. And so they were trying to do everything to somehow help people to struggle. And then finally, after about a month, the call wave was continuous. And the governor got on the radio and said, we have tried everything to somehow or other counteract this cold wave. There's only one left, only thing one left to do, and that we that is we all should pray to God. <laughs> <laughs> so it took him a moment to realize that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but the one who's actually intelligent will go for that as the first option, not the last option. <laughs> Mm. So, okay. yeah, just try to remember. Mm. Try to get try to get to that point of chanting because that's what's gonna really help me. Yeah, you can tie a string around your finger as a reminder. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. So many ways that the mind can be, you know, access. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. We have a comment. Uh, we have a question from Jyoti Mataji. She says, Hare Krishna, dear Maharaji, what should a devotee do when his practices are hampered by material obstacles are increasing more and more? What does Lord expect us to do? Do duties, which is demanding, then service to Lord? <laughs> so what comes from material duty or service to Lord? Oh, obviously. Service to the Lord automatically includes the wisdom or the intelligence of how to live life. Krishna says, if you want remembrance, forgetfulness, or knowledge, I supply it. So whatever you want, if you want to forget Krishna, he'll help you. If you want to remember, he'll help you. So material life is, and this you might say, a, a required part of our life. But spiritual life is life. Material life is not life. It's just maintaining the body and the extensions of the body. family members, friends, and social and political commitments. It's just, you know, trying to keep this body and mind going in this world. It's not necessary, but it's, it's necessary up to a certain point. The spiritual life, therefore we say, if you opt for material life over spiritual life, you lose both. But if you take spiritual life, actually... Krishna works in such a way as to help the devotee also in executing their activities in the material world. He gives the intelligence. So spiritual life is life. You can't say, we use the word material life because it looks like life, but it's not life. It's just, it's just, the it's just material energy can't, connecting with another form of material energy. That's it. And both material energies are dead. The material energy has no life. What gives life is the soul, the presence of the, presence of the living being. So, all right, we have to maintain our family. We have to maintain our body. These things are there, but not in excess. Keep it to a minimum. Keep it to what's required. But 
because we're conditioned to try to expand and increase the quality of our material life, we focus on that. Why don't we... The spiritual life is much more vast, much more complex, not complex, but more, much more variegated than material life. Because material life is a reflection, but not a real reflection, a perverted reflection of spiritual life. So what's the difference between material and spiritual? One who acts for themselves, that's material. One who acts for, for the Lord, that's spiritual. We'll see. Activities sometimes look the same. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. I think Jyoti Mataji has a follow-up question. What about obstacles which are increasing? How to focus on chanting? I mean, it will be like a mundane chanting and not a very focused chanting. Obstacles so. will be there. <clears throat> They'll be there in spiritual life too. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean obstacles are, are, uh, are something that's going to stop our progress. There are opportunities that are given to us to challenge our ability, intelligence, and uh, facility to overcome them. You see, every time you overcome an obstacle, there's a, there's some gain, both both in overcoming the obstacle and at the same time, you gain intelligence. You gain some satisfaction. So you know, obstacles are going to be there. Material obstacles, material life is an obstacle in itself. <laughs> can, can anybody overcome death? No, it's going to come. That's a big obstacle. <laughs> if you want to overcome death, you have to become fully Krishna conscious. Then you can go back home back to the spiritual world when you leave this body. Then you've conquered death. But those who still find, are looking for happiness in the material world, they have to accept the other side because material life is not one-sided. It's always two-sided. If you, if you get happiness, you'll also get distress. They come together. <laughs> The things that bring you happiness are also bringing you distress, either immediate or in the future. Did you say that there is also obstacle in the spiritual life, in the spiritual world? What yes. kind of obstacle? Well, those obstacles and how to how to uh, uh, develop our mood of devotional service that is actually pleasing to the Lord. So th that requires some practice, some knowledge, some good association. How to perfect our spiritual life. So the obstacles that are presented in spiritual life are, are things that are due to our association with material energy. That's all. On the highest platform, there's no obstacles. But to get to the highest platform, we have to go through different levels of, of spiritual practice. And there are nine stages of bhakti. A person on the seventh stage is not is acting different than the person who, who's on the fourth stage. So learn those nine stages and then see what of the what is the quality and characteristics of those stages and how to go to the next dimensions the the most mm, after accepting a bona fide spiritual master then one can overcome the impediments that one comes just like what would be an obstacle well 
you're practicing devotional service, you're getting some benefit, you're getting some intelligence, and you think, well, you know, maybe I should go to the heavenly planets. Life is longer there, and there's much more enjoyment there. So that's that becomes an obstacle. <laughs> Or if you're performing devotional service, you think, well, devotional service is very powerful. Let me develop spiritual power so I can control the material energy. Hmm. Call the mystic power. Mm -hmm. Well, now that I have so much intelligence, I can also ma manipulate the material energy to uh, so I can in increase my enjoyment. These are all obstacles. And so these are obstacles that come by way of success and devotional service. As I as I watered the creeper of bhakti, the the weeds also grow up around it. The reeds, the weeds are I'm more advanced than others. The weeds are I should get some kind of worship. I should get some facility. These are these are actually obstacles that come by way of devotional service. Maharaj, in Vaikuntha, I'm not talking about Golotham. So in Vaikuntha, there is also um, spiritual hindrance or obstacles. Not in the oh, spiritual. No. Okay. Only our spiritual practice in the material world. Mm -hmm. Once you sit in the spiritual world, you have overcome all of the obstacles. <laughs> but take spiritual life as a challenge rather than something that you... Don't try to be peaceful. And if you try to be peaceful you'll actually miss the happiness of Krishna consciousness. Try to take on that, you know, the, the activities of devotional service, whether they're easy or not, take them on. And it's like that's a, that, that brings your consciousness to a higher level of understanding and a higher level of realization of God also. We don't try to, we're not about becoming peaceful. We're about, we're, we're, we're about becoming Krishna conscious. That's it. Peace will be there, but it's a side thing. It's not the goal. Thank you, Maharaj. Very well said. Do you still have time for, or do you have to go? You tell me. It's getting really tough because. Okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj, uh, for your wonderful class. Uh, as you said, you know, we don't want any peace. We just want to um, serve Krishna. But while doing services, many obstacles will come upon, like uh, so yeah. many things. Obstacles or opportunities. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's what devotee wants. Like, uh, oh, we want to fight for Krishna. <laughs> that's where the excitement is. <laughs> and in the fight, Maya will throw obstacles at you. And so, but nothing can defeat you as long as you take shelter of the holy name, association of devotees, hearing from spiritual master, reading the books, these are all the tools by which we conquer over and make advancement. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Devotees, Maharaj is getting late. Let's pay our hum humble obeisances at, your, at his lotus feet. Vaishnavrind ki jai. Jai. Radhe, radhe.